Hey folks, for those that have been following my channel, this is my original Star Wars Arcade 1UP mod that I modded the Arcade 1UP yoke to be able to plug into a computer, make my own custom playlist, installed extra buttons, a throttle, even made my own bench seat uh, before the actual Star Wars bench was available. But now I have another Star Wars cab, a stock one complete with the real bench, and now we're going to be modding this one up, not by doing the APAC mod that I had before, but using this, the Glenn's Retro Show controller yoke that just came out and was released. The Kickstarter campaign folks just got theirs. I'm going to show you how you can order one and install one into your arcade one up without any drilling required. All you got to do is wire up a couple things. Let's get started. All right, let's go over all the supplies you're gonna need for this mod. So first up is the GRS yoke itself, the GRS Glenn's Retro Show yoke. Uh, this was the Kickstarter version that I got um, when I ordered this back in December, January, and I just got it a couple weeks ago. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, this is gonna retail at $265, will be available on Amazon hopefully in December. So feel free to get your hands on this. This is the main thing you're gonna need to mod it up. I'll do a review on this in a second. Next thing in order to convert your stock Arcade One Up monitor to accept HDMI is this DS display adapter. Make sure you get the Gen 3 versions that use the resolution for 1280 by 960. Next we have a couple options for you to light up your stock marquee as well. So uh, there's a Y splitter that you can get and if you want to you can actually make your own plug. There's also these adapters if you don't want to do any wiring and you can convert your stock marquee plug into this which will accept one of these Y splitters here. Next up, if you want to add your stock speakers into this VS Display adapter, you're going to need this 4-pin JST connector here. I think it's a JST PH connector size, and this will plug in. You can cut your stock wire speakers, splice them to these wires, and this is going to plug into your VS Display adapter to be able to use. Last thing is some uh, simple tools that you need. Um, so I really recommend this set. This is a Perceva wire crimping set. So this is what we're gonna need to be able to wire up a couple extra buttons into the GRS yoke. This is super handy for a lot of other mods if you wanted to make these a little, these are essentially the encoder wire ends that you would see uh, you know, on encoders and, and things as well. So you can make your own custom length wires. Uh, super handy to use. I use this all the time. So I do recommend a set if you're gonna be doing more modding. Some basic wire strippers, um, screwdriver, some electrical tape since we'll be doing some wiring. And last up, you do need a PC for the mod that I'm going to be doing. So I run a custom launch box, big box build. So I have full PC tutorials, but this is the PC I'm going to be using. And then uh, some power options. So if you want to power up your cab completely using the stock RK 1UP switch, we're going to make a custom inlet module switch and wire it up to the A1UP one switch. Let's do a quick overview of the GRS yoke and why it's so awesome. So first off, when you pick it up, this thing is super heavy. It's solid metal almost all around, uh, even this cover and this base right here. These plastic handles um, are the only thing that's not metal, but that's okay. It still feels really solid in your hand compared to the arcade one up. The buttons themselves for the, the clickers, they have micro switches that actually kind of click when you press them for the bottom ones, but the top ones don't actually make that clicking sound. So that was a little bit interesting that they used a, a different uh, micro switch mechanism. The um, spring on the y-axis when you move it up and down, this is actually way looser than I thought it would be compared to the arcade one up and actually has less resistance than the left and right motion. So uh, when you're playing the game, it's it's actually kind of interesting. It's not, not quite as even as I thought it would be. It's way easier to move this up and down than it is to move it left and right. Um, the A1 up one, the stock one, actually has a lot more even resistance across the board um, but otherwise super solid construction you have your four buttons you also have two buttons underneath here this is the um, start button and then this is a, another button that you can map out as well and then this is a, a power button on the back here just to be able to switch some of the different modes so that's the pretty much the construction of everything there's three different ways you can connect this you can even just plug this directly into your arcade one up and uh, you know replace the stock one if you want to um, there's also a way to plug this into the original star wars arcade uh, machine to be able to replace the original arcade and then what we're going to be using is this usb connection to connect it into a pc so it reads as a joystick and and that's what we're going to be able to use to map all of our controls. And by the way, there's two secret buttons that are hidden in here that I'm going to show you guys how to wire up to here. So in total, we're going to have eight buttons to be able to play with for our joystick. 
Next up, let's prep your control panel by removing the stock yoke. And then we're going to reuse the volume switches, which is actually going to be repurposed into the two buttons that we're going to wire into the GRS yoke. So this is going to be a one button. That's going to be another button. And then we're going to be able to use this off and on switch to power on the whole cab. Let's start by removing the six screws on the panel. Next, before I remove everything, I'm going to disconnect the power switch and the volume switch from this whole uh, board here, and it's these two right here. So we're going to take a small flathead screwdriver and just slowly kind of chip away and pry from the glue and then pull out the power cable. And then this is the sound cable. So you can almost just jiggle it used to not using it, but I prefer to use a screwdriver. So once this is loose, then we can unscrew everything and take out the yoke. Next, I'm going to unscrew these panels here. And I like to put all the screws inside this plastic thing so we don't lose it. So now that this is loose, now we have these wires which we're going to reuse, kind of put them off to the side. And now we're going to take out the yoke completely from the control panel. All right, to remove your yoke from your control panel, start with these two silver screws here on the back. So uh, again, you don't have to use a, um, a power drill, but it makes life a lot easier. So use what tools you have. So I'm going to be using this for speed. So once you have these two screws out, we have to remove these four screws, which you need to access from the front. So the trick to getting these screws out is you just need to be able to turn your yoke at an angle to expose it. So just hold your yoke with your hand like this and then be able to use your drill to drill out the screw. All right, now that you've uh, removed all the screws, you can just go ahead and carefully start pulling this off of the control panel itself. And then all the wires should come with it. Um, oh, sorry, on the back, you might, you do need to take off this plate first. So take off the plate and make sure you soak through that PCB so this comes off completely. Make sure you don't lose any of the screws in case you want to reuse this later. Uh, and then afterwards, the yoke and all the wires should just come through that front part. And now you'll have a completely separated yoke from your control panel. And I'll do some full comparisons to my original RK1 up, but you can see, uh, you know, some of the difference between the GRS one and then the stock RK1 up. Again, this is all plastic material. This is solid metal construction, um, but I still love the RK1 up yoke and, and, you know, do a lot of the mods and it's perfectly fine. That's, you know, a great option to mod this like my original mod. But for those that are looking for a super simple solution where you don't have to do any drilling into your panel, you can use this. All right, next up, let's go ahead and install our GRS yoke into the control panel. So we're going to take all the wiring here and go the opposite way where we kind of stuff this through the front of the control panel through the back. And then we're going to line this up in the exact same spot that the original yoke was. Uh, and your GRS yoke should have came with nuts and bolts like this. And we're going to use the stock nuts and bolts um, that came with the GRS yoke, not with the arcade one up and then tie it down the same way that we uh, removed it. So once we get it all lined up, we're just going to move it to the side and then put the bolt through here and then tie it down with the nut in the back. All right, our GS yoke is now installed. Uh, it does come with these washers too, so you probably can put these washers on or get bigger ones so it feels a little bit more solid. Tighten it down, um, but you know, I would do that at the very end. Right now it feels pretty secure to, to finish up our wiring and then you can tighten it down completely once you're all satisfied with everything. So for a basic mod, this is pretty much all you need to do. If you really just wanted the six buttons, the four on your yoke and the two on the bottom, and then plug this back into your PC and start wiring it up, you can absolutely do that. You don't need to you know, wire up the stock volume and power switches. You can just power everything up with a surge protector in the back. Um, but I wanted to go a little bit further. I'm gonna show you how to map the volume button switches so you don't have to do any extra drilling and map two additional buttons into your GRS yoke. All right, so uh, check out my other video where I opened this up for the first time and actually discovered two secret buttons that are programmed into the GRS yoke. I confirmed this with Glenn. Um, I was super excited when he confirmed this with me that this is a real feature uh, that isn't in the manual anywhere, but these two extra inputs that are included with this arcade input, the original one, these actually register when you plug it into Windows PC as two extra buttons, button five and button number six. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these 
these wires here, plug in one of these as a ground, and then map two of those buttons into these two wires, and that's gonna give us two extra inputs inside the PC for our joystick controller. All right, so your volume switch is actually a three-way switch that has a neutral a ground, which is this brown wire, and then the black wire is when you move it down, volume down, and then this red wire is when you move it to volume up. So those are the two wires that we're gonna be wiring up. Um, so if you don't wanna cut this, you can also use something like this. This is a JST XH extender. So this is a female connector that we're just gonna plug in, and now I can wire up and cut these wires. If you ever wanted to put this back in stock, it's a really good option. So I'll leave a link where you can grab these as well. So that way you really don't have to cut anything. You can just start cutting uh, these wires and plug it in. So let me break down what this connector is. And so uh, this is an arcade connector that had several different inputs in it, but these are essentially different wires that would register as you know the, the button micro switch inputs. And these two wires that are going into here, these are the ground wires that were that you have. So these are two Molex connector grounds. This green one is a ground as well, but these two black ones, this is what we need to connect uh, this now red wire, but gets connected to the brown wire into this ground here. So we're gonna be able to secure this in there. Uh, and then these two wires here, again, Again, that have this um, it's a female spade connector if you can kind of see in here um, so this is would be like almost like the end of an encoder wire that you would see that's just covered up by plastic and so we're going to connect this black and, and yellow wire we're gonna put some male connectors that are gonna plug straight into this here so this red one is gonna plug into the ground wire here and then these black and yellow are gonna plug into these two here and that's how we're gonna add our extra buttons to the yoke all right, here's where we're gonna break out our perceiver crimping set and we're gonna be looking for the 4.8 millimeter connectors here. So we're gonna need two of the male connectors here, the 4.8 millimeter, the middle one, there's a small, medium, and big one. And then we're gonna grab one of the 4.8 millimeter, um, the female connectors, and we're gonna use this for the ground and this one for the two inputs. Next, uh, just grab your wire strippers here. If you have the extender wires, we're just gonna cut off a little bit more off the edges of here so that we can expose more wire to, before we start crimping. Now to use these crimping pliers, uh, there's three different teeth here for the three different sizes. So let's start off with one of these male connectors. I'm gonna put it into the middle one here. It might be a little bit loose since it's a single wire, but we can always tighten it going down to the bottom one too. So I just put it in place so it, it holds it in place right there. This is a ratchet, so it kind of holds it in place. And then I'm going to stick in, let's start with the yellow one. Stick the yellow wire into the crimping terminal um, so that at least a little bit of the plastic part is right, right at the edge. And so when I crimp down, it's going to start crimping down the plastic and then that exposed wire is touching the metal part. Uh, if it feels a little bit loose, you can always just crimp it down to the next one as well. Uh, sometimes I like to do both of them just so I have it nice and tight. Um, so that is a crimped uh, terminal there. And then we're going to do the other one as well. So let's grab this one. Um, since it's kind of small, let's see if we can already start squishing it into the small one. Up, oh, no. All right, let's do the big one. Sometimes these are meant for, for super big wires. Uh, so got to make do with what you have. So let's stick the black wire inside here as well. Crimp it down. Nice and secure. Go to the bottom one too. All right, there we go. All right, and then we're going to take our uh, ground, the red one. We're going to take another set of the, the female connector this time, not the male one. We're gonna do the same thing where we stick it inside. Sometimes you can twist it so it doesn't fray. First, stick it through and then crimp down. So you have a nice solid connection. If you feel like you wanna do one more, and go to the lowest one too, do one more. Okay, so now I have the ground as a female and then my two other buttons, the yellow and the black here. All right, connecting these male connectors that we just um, created is very simple to plug into the GRS yoke, uh, um, you know, these secret buttons here. So these just plug in to the female spade connectors that you have, uh, just one and two. Um, so it should be a pretty tight connection. Um, if it's not, you can always grab your pliers and pinch these down so that they don't uh, get loose. You can always take electrical tape, tie it down. Uh, but now we have to take this uh, this ground wire and plug it into uh, the Molex connector here. So remember, pay attention to the colors of the Molex connector. These two black wires are the grounds for this 
here. And so we're going to kind of take our pliers uh, and a flat screwdriver and I'm going to kind of open up this encoder um, end just a little bit this terminal so it creates a little bit almost like a, a metal hole and then take my pliers so they become a little bit rounder so I'm just again making my own connector for this Molex connector so if you look I just made a little bit of a, a, a hole there so that now I can plug this into the ground section and make sure that it feels you know somewhat tight uh, you can find other ways to plug this in um, but this was just the simplest way that I saw to make a secure ground connection. So look, now this is a grounded into this input here. Uh, these are my buttons here. And now we've just added two buttons to our GRS, GRS yoke. So again, there's gonna be the four buttons on the back, on the front. So this registers as button number one. This is two, this is three, this is four. Now this is going to be button number five when you move it to the left and then button number six when you move it to the right. So this is going to be, you know, you have stock buttons already in your control panel that you can wire up. Um, and then on the bottom, this will be button number seven and button number eight right here. So these are your two bottom buttons. Um, and that's it. That's all the wiring that you need to do. Um, when we get to the power section, I'll show you that. But we're done. We can go ahead and start plugging this back into um, your Star Wars Arcade 1UP panel. Next up, we're gonna take off the stock PCB and install this VS display adapter to the back of your monitor here. Um, so check out my other video where I have a full tutorial on putting this together. Uh, you can use the cardboard to be able to create a um, barrier between the, the monitor and your VS display adapter. Or you can see here, I've used some sticky adhesive PCB feet that I'll leave a link to that'll also help you uh, mount it to the back of your cab. So go ahead and get that set up. And then afterwards, make sure you grab an extra HDMI cable because this is what you're gonna use to plug into your computer. Now to power up your stock marquee, you need to find a way to plug in this marquee plug into one of these standard Y splitters that you need because one of these Y splitters is going to plug into this display adapter and this extra one is going to power up your marquee. Um, so this is the, a different size as well. So even if you got an extended bear to make this a female, it's not the right size. So you really have two options. The first one is if you don't want to do any splicing wiring, you can get two different barrel connectors that are going to convert uh, this into the right size adapter. Um, so first off, this is the stock, uh, again, marquee. And this is an adapter that's going to make this smaller barrel into a standard size 12 volt adapter. And then next, we're going to use this female to female adapter. It's going to plug into here and it's going to make it accept a, uh, a female plug. And then lastly, we can plug in the Y splitter and that's it. If you don't want to do any wiring, these two adapters are the easiest, simplest way to be able to get your stock marquee up and running. Now, if you're comfortable with basic wiring, uh, there is a, an adapter here, a female adapter, where you can cut the ends of one of these Y, y splitters and then just wire up using those same uh, those spade connectors that you have in your Perceiva kit. You can wire up two small ones and plug them into uh, this adapter here. And uh, you do have to make sure that you use electrical tape, tape so that these aren't touching at all. I'm just kind of showing you an example. But now you would have a Y splitter where one is dedicated directly into your display adapter and then the stock marquee is going to be able to plug in directly into this. So this is a little bit of a cleaner option. Uh, when I finish making these, I use kind of three Y splitters and then um, I end up making kind of a, an enclosed adapter like this. So I have two Y splitters and then this one uh, kind of a clean uh, adapter. Uh, but again, you have you have lots of options. You could even, you know, cut this wire as well and then plug it into, um, you know, a standard 12 volt adapter like this. Um, so these are just some options to be able to plug in your stock marquee. Now you also have lots of options for sound, but if you want to reuse your stock speakers from your RK one up and plug it into this VS display adapter, you can take your stock um, power, um, this is the, um, the plug that would normally plug into the PCB, cut off the ends of it and it's going to expose two wires that have an additional two smaller wires inside of them. So there's four total wires that are coming out of your stock speakers. And now if you use this JST four pin adapter, we can just go ahead and splice these wires together. Um, so there's four uh, wires that are coming out of this, the white and the red ones on the ends, and then the black and the um, yellow one in the middle. Um, so kind of similar to this, we can just wire up the red to the red, 
the, the white to the white, which are the um, positive inputs on your sound. And then the two blacks are gonna go into the middle inputs on this four pin adapter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wire this up really quickly. Uh, once you're done splicing this, you can use your electrical tape to you know, make this a little bit more cleaner so they're not touching. And then, um, or you can use heat shrink tube either way. And uh, that's what I like to use when I do my mods as well. So it's a heat shrink tube it make it extra clean but you can use electrical tape too and then i'll show you how to plug it into your vs display adapter so you can get great sound coming out of your stock speakers all right now that i have all my sound wires spliced together i just use some uh, basic electrical tape here to make sure that they're not touching with each other i would normally like to use heat shrink and then uh, make sure it's nice and tight but this is a quick tutorial and then lastly we're going to plug in this four pin connector into this slot right over here on your vs display board so it should plug straight in uh, just make sure you get the right size connector it's jst ph connectors it's a four pin connector not the xh one otherwise it won't fit um, but that's it. So now that you have your marquee plugged in, uh, you have your Y splitter plugged in here, we have your HDMI connector, um, your stock RK one up power adapter is what you're going to use uh, to power everything up. That's your standard 12 volt adapter. So you do need that Y splitter though. So the Y splitter is, is, is important so that you can plug in both your marquee and then uh, your power up your VS display adapter. So now let's go over power. Now there's lots of different options you have to power up your Arcade 1UP cap when you do a mod. I'm going to go over a fairly advanced option to be able to use what's called an inlet module switch to power up a surge protector and make a remote switch for your surge using your stock Arcade 1UP. So let's start by taking a look at your Arcade 1UP stock switch. So you can see here that this switch here is rated at 6 amps. 125 volts or 3 amps at 250 volts. So that means that any power that's that's being run through this switch can manage a load of up to 6 amps. If your device produces more than 6 amps uh, of everything that's plugged into the surge protector, that's what can cause this to overheat. Um, so uh, the load that we're going to be putting on here, we have your stock monitor, uh, which your power supply is only drawing 3 amps. And then this small form factor PC here uh, has a 240 watts power supply and that only draws about two amps so you have about five amps that we're going to be running through uh, the surge protector so this switch can handle that load um, so this is just kind of like my disclaimer that you know this is on basic principle it should work but take this again with um with caution it is electricity um so you definitely want to be um really careful when you're doing any wiring to this make sure everything's secure so do this at your own risk but you know this is just some basic information on electronics uh, on how this switch would be able to power up your surge protector and have the monitor cable plugged into that as well as your pc all right, so here's my custom inlet module switch that I make. Uh, and again, this is uh, pretty advanced, so definitely do this with caution using insulated um, you know, female spade connectors. And instead of uh, cutting a surge protector end, I use an extension cord and plugged it in as well. And then I wired an extra wire from the hot black wire here so I can plug these two into the Arcade 1UP switch. Um, I'll do a full tutorial later on you know, how to do this, but I always worry about doing tutorials on electronics uh, for people. Uh, but this is how I wire up my um, inlet module switch. So then the stock surge protector can plug straight into this. And then I'm gonna use this uh, 14 gauge wire uh, to plug into these two connections and then plug the other end into the stock arcade one up switch. Okay, so with my 14-gauge uh, wire, I, I wired up two small female spade connectors, and so th and then I put on two um, heat string tubes on the end of it, so I can make sure that it's covered. Uh, or you can use electrical tape as well. So these two ends are going to plug into the back of the Arcade 1UP switch. So this is just my sample switch. Uh, and so if you have your switch plugged in, it's normally going to look like this. And then you'll have these two connections here. So this is the off position. That's the on position. Just use the two plugs directly underneath it and plug these directly into that. Um, so you can plug this in. Make sure it's super secure when you plug it in. I'm just doing the sample on this one, but you would be doing this on the panel that we just um, you know, updated a second ago. Uh, so yeah, just go ahead and make sure this is really tight and secure. And again, I like to use 14 gauge wire uh, and I use my, again, the perceiver crimping tool set to crimp on to uh, these spade connectors here and then make sure I have the covers on them and heat shrink it down. 
Um, so then the other ends of these two wires, I have my insulated um, connectors here. So I have male connectors that are insulated that are going into this inlet module switch here. So this is gonna connect through. Uh, and again, this is my own personal kind of advanced technique that I use to, to wire this together. Um, you don't need to use these extra ends. You could even just um, you know create this where it plugs directly straight into the inlet module switch. Uh, and I'll try to do another tutorial separately if people are interested in this, but um, again, this is just how I wire things up. Okay, so now what, is, what this is doing now, it's creating a remote connection to be able to power up whatever's gonna come into here. So let's go ahead and test this out. So if I plug um, the inlet module switch into this power here, so the first thing is what, if everything's working and you hit this on switch, this should light up. So this is let up, that's perfect, um, but there's no power being supplied to this yet because we don't have our other switch turned on. So this is gonna be on the back of your cab in an on position. Now we're going to test our surge protector. So we're gonna plug in this power strip here. I know this is a lot, this is a big mess, but you'll, you'll see what I mean in just a second. Okay, so now when we flip this switch, the surge protector power doesn't turn on because we haven't turned on the power using the RK1 up switch. But now that we have this, once we flip this switch, this light's gonna turn on. So this remote switch was gonna be on your control panel. This is essentially a remote switch for the surge protector inside your cab. And then we're gonna have your monitor plugged in as well as your PC. And then we're gonna set your PC to turn on when it detects power. So that's how I set everything up. Again, this is fairly advanced, um, but this is what I do to set up my power. You have lots of options on your own on how you wanna set up your own power. All right, let's talk about a PC that you're gonna need for this mod as well. Um, so I have a, a couple of different PC tutorials that you should check out in the links below. Um, but this is a, a sample uh, Optiplex 990 using a Core i7-2600 uh, with eight gigabytes of RAM, 120 gig hard drive, uh, 500 gig rollover storage, and a DTX 1650. So this is what I recommend if you're gonna be putting uh, some effort into building a budget PC cab. Um, so these are just some sample specs you can use, but I have videos on, on other types of builds. But once you're done, put this inside your cab. We're gonna wire everything up, show you some sample gameplay with the yoke. All right, I have my PC now put into the back of my cab along with the power um, on the bottom there. The a one up panel with the GRS yoke is installed and all the wires are just hanging out. So I definitely would recommend tying everything down with zip ties if you can. Uh, so we got our HDMI power going in from the VS display adapter, uh, going into the PC, and then make sure the USB is plugged in from the GRS yoke into the PC. So everything's plugged in. Let's go ahead and go around to the front and then hit the power button. And this is going to turn on that surge protector inside the cab. You can see that the um, marquee will light up as well. And then the PC is set to turn on when it detects power automatically. Um, so that'll boot up in just a second. That's the same way that I have this set up as well. So you can start seeing the uh, PC booting up right there. Um, so again, this is such a versatile yoke. It can do a lot. It registers as a joystick by default with six buttons. So when you plug it in, the windows will recognize it as joystick one. Uh, and then you have button number one, two, three, four, and then it skips it. It goes seven and eight. So then the button five and six is what we map to the volume switch here. So again, no drilling required. We just added two extra buttons here for extra gameplay or for start coin, whatever you want to map it to. Um, but what are you going to play it with? Uh, I created a custom launch box, big box build called Starcade Playlist 2.0. This is my own personal collection of um, you know, putting together a playlist of different games that would work with the yoke. So 329 different games, Star Wars games, racing games, shmups, shooters. Uh, the yoke can do it all. I'm such a huge fan of this controller. It's been my love of kind of arcades the last six, seven months for people that have seen this. Um, but I'll do a full demo of my playlist in a little bit. But you can see once you're in the system, um, you know, this is just a beautiful front end. I even have pinball set up on my new Starcade playlist where I can use these to flippers and then this would be tilt and everything. Um, so it's just a really great, awesome way to play um, any of these games that all work with the yoke. So this is the GRS yoke again. This is the original arcade one up yoke. Here, let's just let's do some comparisons where you can see, look how loose this, um, this yoke is from the the Y switch and then here's the stock one. Super tight, right? So this is very tight, tight to move. And this one is super loose. Uh, this feels a little bit stiffer, 
um, but this one is also looser as well. So this has a little bit more, you know, heavy tension um, on the Y yoke, and this is easier. This is super loose here. Um, so those are some of the key differences there. Yeah, and so I created um, a version of my playlist that actually would work with the DRS yoke, so everything's mapped to the controller settings. Um, before, I used to have a dedicated start and coin button, but I mapped this to start and coin down here. Um, so if you're playing a game, let's just go into a classic racing game, um, like OutRun. You know, I really hope to take a look at the OutRun cab that's coming up pretty soon as well. Um, so once this is loaded up, then this is going to be your coin button and your start button. And to exit a game, I mapped using Joy to Key the start button. If you hold it down long enough, it'll be escape. So this is my coin. It's going to be start. This is going to be my gas. So let's just go. And then you can see how smooth things are running. So really fun, great controls, super responsive. I mean, this is just a main game, so you can always change the analog settings. Um, but the yoke can do so much. It acts like a mouse as well. So we can play shooting games that would normally re register as a mouse. Um, and then when you're ready to exit a game, I just hold down my start button. It's going to exit out and go back. Um, so I map that out custom uh, using this playlist. Again, it can do so much more. Um, I love this yoke. It's awesome. Let's do... Let's do a shooting game. Let's do a let's do a, a modern shooter using something simple like I don't know if I did all these. Yeah, let's do Time Crisis. I can play Time Crisis on here. We'll check it out. I hope I mapped it out well. We'll see. These are my triggers. Let's see. Start. Two more, one more coin. Boom. Okay, so this is this is good. So you can see the yoke acts as the mouse. This is gonna be my pedal, and this is my trigger. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it one-handed. Pew pew pew. Oh, my pedal's not set up. Step on the pedal to attack. Alright, we gotta map that out really quick. Map this game's controls. Foot pedal. It's gonna be button number one so let's make that this top button okay all right so here we go button up boom so that's trigger I'm doing this one-handed yeah so this is the game play I probably need to mess with the analog controls to get it a little bit smoother but this is an example of a gun game using the yoke all right well uh, exit the game again Hope you guys enjoyed the video of how to mod up your Arcade 1UP cab using the GRS yoke. You can do so much with it. Highly recommend it. If you guys are interested in this playlist or have any questions, feel free to message me, maybe leave a comment. And uh, thanks again. Appreciate your time. Take care.